Here we are at Sakara. This is the famous steep pyramid of Josa. Josa is a, a title to the king of the third dynasty, 2900 BC, roughly said the books. The, the steep pyramid is the, located in a big uh, courtyard, much, much older than the pyramid itself. And you can compare yourself with the same eye. You look at the pyramid and you look at the wall, you can see the difference. These chunks of stone in front of Hakim are quartz crystal characteristic of the area. If we go back to the ceiling here, then it reflects the crystal tile on the ground. This is what's left of it. This has been quarried by the natives in the area in the 17th century. We see the remains of a quartz floor at Giza in the temple to the east of the second pyramid. Now I'm pointing the jet pillar, which is symbolizing one of the ancient gods, Osiris. And jet is a word we still use to address the older people, like grandmother and grandfather, jet. It goes back to the story of Osiris and uh, his brother Seth, the bad guy, who put Osiris in a coffin, throw him in the ocean. The ocean took him, place Phoenicia, Lebanon today, and there is the cedar tree grows, and the roots of the cedar tree captured this coffin, till it has been found by his beloved sister Isis. She cry, her tears touch his body, and they live together again, for a short while, short enough to make a baby with the name of Horus. The story of Isis, Osiris, and Horus is fundamental to Egyptian cosmology. Isis is connected to the star Sirius, and Osiris is connected to the constellation of Orion. Horus is their prodigal son. I'm going to take you now to see that hospital the healing with the sound. Stories about ancient healing techniques were passed down from generation to generation by the elders. Hakim explains how sound played a part in diagnosing and healing patients. That line of construction you see like uh, three chambers. It's what's left of the, the house of the spirit. And it's a, a healing system with a sound. It's a medical investigation table. And the patient have the right to use either side of the stairs. One on the right, one on the left. So he have to follow, or she have to follow her own antenna to climb up there and choose the point where she stands. Because each point is connected to a, a chick chamber. We have 22 of them, 11 on each side, no ceiling. And when you go inside, you can see a, a niche where the physician put his head in the niche to see what's the matter with his patient laying on this table. And that works with the sound. And the sound the source is running water in a tunnel underneath here. So it's a big map of tunnels underneath here. Let's consider that the pyramid sites along the Band of Peace are sophisticated harmonic structures, not only mirroring positions of the stars, but designed to replicate harmonic cavities of the human body. It seems that the chambers in the pyramids are harmonically tuned to a specific frequency or musical tone. Sound healing techniques were used to restore the patient's body to the correct harmonic within. This is the view of Abu Sir to the north of Saqqara, and here is the view of Dashur to the south.
Here we are on location at the Bent Pyramid. What you'll notice here is that the construction has two angles. Traditional Egyptologists will tell you that the Egyptians were practicing building pyramids. And they started building at one angle, then changed their minds partway through. This is the kind of thinking that paints the ancient Egyptians as infantile and misguided. But is there another way of looking at it? We call these constructions at that area in Dakshur related to king called Sinifro. At Dashur, there are three pyramids with three burial chambers in each, nine in total. Traditional Egyptology tells us that the entire site was built by Sneferu. If the established story that the pyramids are tombs is correct, why would Sneferu have needed so many? Sneferu would have had nine different possibilities and options for where he would have been buried, which again is illogical. So this comes back to the fact that understanding the Egyptians in terms of traditional Egyptology means that they were misguided and illogical. I don't think this was the case. Now, when you come to the word Sneferu, sin means double. Nefer is harmony, so it's double harmony. It's not a name of a person but it's the energy we get from this construction. Let's consider that the pyramid sites along the Band of Peace are sophisticated harmonic structures. It seems that the chambers in the pyramids were harmonically tuned to different frequencies or musical tones. The Bent Pyramid, it has two uh, chambers for two different sounds. Each chamber in each pyramid then could be exemplifying sound technology with distinct tones creating huge fields of harmonic resonance. At Dashur, we have the Red Pyramid and the Black Pyramid. The Bent Pyramid is covered in white Tura limestone. So we have red, white and black. Maybe this is a clue to the Giza pyramids also having distinct colours in the past. It would seem that the Great Pyramid would have been shimmering white with its casing stones. The Second Pyramid still glimmers red. And the third pyramid has the remnants of black stones. This is the old riverbed where the Nile flowed in times past. Here is the black pyramid. Egyptologists say the pyramid builders were experimenting and they miscalculated, so the pyramid broke apart. Could there be a different explanation? Another pyramid with similar construction, 100 kilometers south of the Band of Peace, is known as the Maidum Pyramid. Today when you walk around Maidum Pyramid, you'll find out that on the ground is a coat of uh, black color flint. And the, the evidence is this. When you pick up one of these flints, you see it's black at the top and the bottom is a different color. And there is a catastrophe happening over there. I want you to look at the ground. You can see a coat of smoke affect the, the, the flints on the ground. Maidum is not the only place that looks as though there was an explosion. Look at this giant crack in the solid stone of the Red Pyramid. It would have taken a huge force to crack the solid rock. There is a crack in the subterranean chamber in the Great Pyramid. And there is another one in the Grand Gallery. There are weird chemical burns in the Red Pyramid. What could have caused these? 
Old photos of the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid show the stone as black. The room was cleaned and restored, and now we can see the walls of pink granite. The granite sarcophagus has a broken corner, and the wall next to it has a giant crack. What kind of force could have caused this? Is the Department of Antiquities erasing evidence under the guise of restoration? Where did we get the history of Egypt? Herodotus was a Greek historian in the 5th century BC. He wrote from his perspective, with help from local people, and we have been repeating it ever since. Uh, it's a fake story. I want you to know yourself, to, to, to wake up, to wake the senses and, and look carefully what you are looking at. What have you seen of the pyramid today? That's what's left of it. Being abused, qu people quarry stones from there. Anybody can go and pick up stones and to build a, um, a church, mosque, a house, a palace. It's not uh, taken good care of by our uh, uh, Minister of uh, Culture and the Antiquities Department. I have to say this. The story leaves many questions unanswered. Maybe it is time we use the evidence to reconsider what we've been told. We need to look with fresh eyes and use a different time frame to reconstruct the story of ancient Egypt.